Hey, man, you want to know how to set up your new audio interface to use with Pro Tools? Well, you came to the right place. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Wavy Wayne from wavywayne.com. And if you are new here, this channel is all about helping you to record and mix better and faster. So let's just go ahead and get off into the video, man. Today, we're going to be talking about how to set up an audio interface to use with Pro Tools. Yeah, the best dog in the world. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say the commentary. A audio interface, man. Basically, whatever you know, audio interface you have, it may have some software that you need to download from the manufacturer's website. So make sure that you do that. Maybe any drivers or software that you need to get installed on your computer. That's the very first thing that you need to do. After you got all of that downloaded and installed, now we need to go ahead and connect our audio interface to the computer. Typically it will come with some type of cable, like in this case, the Focusrite is coming with a USB cable. So I would just connect the USB cable with the proper end to the audio interface itself. And then we're gonna take the other end of it and connect that to my computer. Some audio interfaces have external power supplies. You also wanna go ahead and connect that if you need to, and then we can power on the audio interface. Once you got your interface powered up, let's go ahead and jump off into Pro Tools to see what type of settings we need to configure before we can start recording and using that interface for a session. When you initially launch Pro Tools, it'll open up to the dashboard. But what we wanna do is first confirm that the appropriate interface is being seen by our computer in Pro Tools. And so we need to just go ahead and cancel this dashboard. And then you can go straight up to the setup menu and choose playback engine. Pro Tools calls the hardware device that you're using, your sound card, the playback engine. So we just want to make sure that whatever audio interface you've just connected is selected here and is being used as the playback engine for the session that we're going to start. Here's a little bonus tip for y'all out there. For recording, the hardware buffer size really matters, okay? So if we're going to be doing a recording session, which we are, we want to keep the hardware buffer size pretty low. And if you're going to be doing mixing, then you want to go ahead and bump that up higher, okay? So the rule of thumb for the hardware buffer size is high for mixing, low for recording to reduce latency. If you want more information about latency and what the hardware buffer size is doing, join my Pro Tools certification course. I got a link down in the description where you can sign up for my next Avid Pro Tools certification course that's enrolling right now. Now, we're just going to go ahead that we have our appropriate interface selected. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And this is going to bring me back to my blank screen. But now I can go ahead and go up to the file menu in Pro Tools and hit create a new session. We're going to go ahead and just name this Wavy123. OK. And again, we're not really focusing on all these parameters and stuff right now. But one thing that I will focus on is the I.O. settings. Those are the input and output settings that are going to be attached to your session. We're going to change this from last used to stereo mix. Anytime that you choose stereo mix, Pro Tools will default to using the appropriate input and output labels that correspond with the audio interface that you just selected. Save the session in some location. And here we go in our Pro Tools edit window. Now. All we simply have to do is make a new track. To do this in Pro Tools, you just go up to the track menu, choose new. We can name this track uh, Vox. That's an abbreviation for vocals. And then we want to just go to the input and output tabs where we see this I.O. section. If your I.O. section is not showing in Pro Tools, you can simply go up to the view menu. And since I'm in the edit window, I'll go to edit window views and make sure that I.O. is showing. Or I can go over to my mix window by going to the window menu, choosing mix. And then you can see the same thing here. I have an I.O. section here as well. So the important thing is that in the I.O. that we have an appropriate input, whatever input we plugged our microphone to on the audio interface. So if you plug your mic into input one, make sure that input one is selected as the input to this track. And then the output should be whatever the main stereo outputs are of your interface. When Pro Tools detects those uh, that main monitor path, they will put a little uh, speaker icon next to it, letting you know, hey, this is that main output that we've detected. And so you can make sure that that path is chosen. For a little bonus here, I love giving y'all bonuses. You can go up to the setup menu and choose I.O. And then on my input path, so that I always know that input one is my microphone, I'm just going to go right here to this uh, path named mic one. 
And then you see they group the paths in stereo pairs. So instead of just changing the whole pair, I'm just going to change this input one by double clicking on the name and I'm going to call it Mike. Hit OK. And now if you see on my input path in Pro Tools, that label that I just created is also there. That's just going to make organization a whole lot easier whenever I'm making new tracks and adding tracks. I'll know that this path labeled mic is always going to be where my mic is coming from. Once you have your inputs and output paths set up correctly, you can go ahead and record enable the track. I'm going to mute that for us real quick. I can record enable the track and then open up my transport window by going to the window menu, choosing transport. You can hit the record button here in the transport and then hit the play button or use the space bar to start recording. Now there are faster, easier ways to start recording than that. You can find it by watching some of my videos on the channel or again, sign up for the Pro Tools certification course where you can learn everything that you need to know about using Pro Tools. I'm Wavy Wayne from wavywayne.com. I hope you have found this video helpful. I'll have a whole lot more Pro Tools content coming for you in the future. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and uh, be dope.